Hello everyone, welcome to Hatha Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Let's begin today in a restorative Sukta Baddha Konasana as we open the shoulders, the front of the shoulders, as well as the hips. So please grab a couple of blocks or pillows or a rolled up blanket that you can create a cylinder shape out of. And if the latter, you can place that cylinder across your mat about a foot and a half inward from the rear edge. If you have two blocks, one block on its tallest height, furthest away from you, and then second block medium height, a little closer to you, spacing the blocks apart so that you can leave your pelvis on the ground. And now let's arrange the legs first before we lie back, bringing the soles of your feet together. If you find that your knees are uncomfortably lifting away from the floor, you might grab a couple other blocks if you have that, or pillows or blankets. Just try to have them at the same height. And then as you lie back, find the area that's right underneath your shoulder blades to place on the lower height block, the one that's closer to you. Let your shoulders roll downward into the space between the blocks as the back of your skull lands on the furthest block. Just feel into how you might need to adjust so that your left and right shoulders feel balanced with both releasing downward and away from your neck. Now you might opt to set your hands to rest on your belly as that can feel grounding, especially if you've been very active today or mind or body. Or to accentuate the opening in the front of your shoulders, you can rotate your upper arm bones to flip your palms to face up so that the backs of your hands, forearms rest slightly out to your sides on the ground. Find what's most comfortable for you to be able to be still. Allow a pause before we begin moving things around to really tune in. How you're feeling in your body. Your mind. your heart and your energy. As you notice the way your breath is flowing in and out. Perhaps you clarify a focus for your practice today whether it be a specific intention you're cultivating, manifesting in your life, personal prayer, dedication, or the effort you put forth, or a word that you want to practice embodying some quality. Beginning to slow your breath down, you might imagine breathing into your torso as though it were a jar from the bottom up, from the pelvis to the neck, filling up that jar with breath. Slowly lifting the breath from the lower belly, lower back, into the side ribs, front ribs, back ribs, and then all the way up to your collarbones, the upper back, your armpits, and then releasing the breath with any sound you may like to your mouth. Really taking your time and even feeling empty breath. You sink into that feeling as the belly sinks into the spine. The next inhale, try to go a little longer, a little slower. Perhaps visualizing the sides of your torso, back and front of your torso, gently expanding, enlivening with life force, prana carried to your breath. And this time, linger for a few seconds at the top of your inhalation, really feeling that fullness. And then at your own pace, again, making any sound as you exhale slower through your mouth. 
lingering at the bottom or you've emptied the breath for a few seconds. And as we lie here, I invite you to chant with me two rounds of OM as a means of extending the breath longer and waking up your throat energy center, as well as stimulating your vagus nerve to activate calm in your nervous system. So take the next inhale to prepare. Om. Another deep breath in. Oh. Last om, closing your lips. Invite the breath, if you can, just in and out through your nose. Slow, steady breath. And then bringing your hands to the outsides of your thighs, begin to lift your knees, stepping your two feet on the ground. Separate your feet a little wider than hips distance, then drop your knees together to touch. So now we're opening up gently across your lower back, giving it a stretch. And on your next inhale, slowly raise your arms up and overhead. Hook opposite thumbs. And as you exhale, continue to reach the arms overhead, maybe behind you towards the ground, while plugging your shoulder bones further down into your shoulder sockets, moving away from your neck. Staying here, a few breaths, inhale, lengthen the sides of your waist from your outer hips up to your ar outer armpits. Exhale, feel your belly soften inward towards the back of your body. Inhale, raise your arms overhead, unhook the thumbs. And then exhale, switch the other thumb on top and continue to stretch the arms again overhead. Pausing for a few breaths, inhale, lift from the outer hips, up the sides of your torso, to the sides of your arms, your pinky fingers. And as you exhale, walk your shoulder blades down your back ribs. Soften your front ribs in towards your back. Take one more breath. And then bring your arms down by your side, separate your knees. Let's turn over to one side in which you can roll off the blocks or whatever props you have underneath. And then just slide them away so that we can come down onto our backs. Grab your strap if you have one and just put it beside you. You might need it in a moment. And as you're lying on your back, bend your right knee into your chest. Taking hold of your right thigh or shin, begin to circle your right foot at the ankle. Any kind of movement, stretching the toes by pointing them, flexing the foot. Left leg is extended forward on the ground. Now become more active with your left leg. So turn your left kneecap to face the sky, left middle toe to face the sky, by spiraling your inner left thigh slightly towards the floor instead of turning out your left leg. And then press the big toe mound of your left foot forward, flare the pinky toe back towards your outer left knee, and then begin to extend your arms forward to frame your right leg. Lift your right knee to bend directly over your right hip instead of too close to your chest, and flex your right foot too. Take a deep inhale, walk the shoulder blades down your back. Exhale, draw in your navel towards your spine and lift your head and shoulders off the ground. Pausing as you breathe here. A few more cycles. Can you feel your navel pressing inward towards your spine and then slightly lifting upward towards your chest? As your tailbone does the opposite, it lengthens forward towards your inner left heel as you actively press the mound of your left big toe forward. Now keep your head and shoulders lifted. Bring your left arm to meet your right. 
pressing the back of your left forearm against your outer right thigh. And if your neck needs support, you can place your right palm behind your skull, reaching towards the upper right corner of your room. Now with your left arm extended, keep spiraling the torso through the middle of it and reaching left fingertips forward. Three more breaths, inhale. Exhale, keep lifting both shoulders. Inhale, relaxing your face, relaxing your mouth. Exhale, two. One more deep breath. And then exhale, set your right foot on the ground and bend your left knee into your chest. Take a moment to move your left foot around, circling in both directions. Point and flex. Then flexing your right foot here, spiral your inner right thigh downward so that you're not turning out your right leg. And press the big toe mound of your right foot forward, flaring the pinky toe back towards the outer knee. Frame your left thigh with your two arms reaching towards your front wall. Bend your left knee to stack directly above your left hip. Take a deep breath in, draw your shoulder blades down your back. Exhale, scoop your lower belly towards your spine and towards your heart, lifting the head and shoulders. Pausing here as you breathe. Feel the energy through your fingertips, reaching for your front wall. And take your right arm to meet your left arm, crossing it to the outside of your left thigh, maybe pressing against it. If your neck needs more support, use your left palm behind your skull. Keep lifting your head and shoulders as you now add a spiraling action, a twist. Activating your obliques, breathe in. Exhale, reaching the right fingertips towards the upper left corner of your room, inhale. Exhale, lifting both shoulders off the floor. Last breath here, spiraling across the middle of your torso. And exhale, set your left foot on the ground. Bending both knees into your chest. Hug your thighs, hug your knees, whatever you can reach. And let's begin to rock forward and back, forward and back, building some momentum. You might even let the legs roll overhead towards a plow pose. You might even walk forward so much that you plant your feet and come into a momentary squat in Malasana. Take about three more times of rocking. And let's meet sitting upright in a squat. So pelvis on the floor or pelvis on blocks or pillow, whatever you need. Separate your thighs wide apart. Take your left arm as I'm mirroring you and catch hold of the inside of your left calf or ankle, nudging the thigh open with your elbow. Raise your right arm, press downward to your left and right sitting bones, and lift your spine a little taller as you breathe in. Spiral your chest to your right side, and then lean back as you exhale. And now, root down through your pelvis, lift up to your spine, and then exhale, keep spiraling your chest. Now there's an option to wrap your right arm behind you for their opening the front of your right shoulder. Your palm might land on your lower back. Your fingers might reach hold of the top of your left thigh. Or your left arm might go under your left thigh and you're clasping your hands. Whatever the variation, let's take two more deep breaths. Exhaling, release. Bring your right arm to the inside of your right leg, catching hold of your ankle or calf. Nudge the thigh open with your right elbow, and then raising your left arm, sit up a little taller by pressing downward, breathe in. Exhale, spiral your chest to the left and lean back. Inhale, lift the spine, round your pelvis. Exhale, keep twisting. And then here you might explore wrapping your left arm behind you, adding more sensation perhaps into your left shoulder. 
maybe catching hold of the top of your right thigh with your left fingertips, or adding a bind where your right arm slides underneath your right thigh, meeting your left hand to clasp. Let's take two more breaths. And as you exhale and wind, come into a comfortable seat as we enter an energizing breath technique. So this one involves inhaling through the nose for a count of six, holding your breath in for four counts, exhaling through the nose a count of six, and holding your breath out for one count. So the holding the breath in a little longer than the amount you hold the breath out is what helps to energize the system. So let's breathing through the nose, sit up tall and relax, empty your shoulders, empty this breath. Hold your breath out, then inhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it in for four, three, two, one. Exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, hold it out for one. Inhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold one. Inhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold one. Let the breath flow in and out to your nose. Now creating a soft whispering sound by gently narrowing the back of your throat. Inhale deeply. Balance with the length of your exhale slowly all through your nose, entering ujjayi pranayama. As you continue to listen to that faint sound, let's blink the eyes open as they're closed and come on down to downward facing dog. Another way to energize yourself is to come into some inversion. So this is a nice place to start. Take a moment as you arrive in your downward dog to shift around if you need a few breaths to maybe pedal your feet in place warming up your hamstrings and calves, Achilles tendon. Maybe to add swiveling your hips left and right, stretching the sides of your torso a little more, or moving your skull organically, releasing any tension from your neck, perhaps fluttering your lips, releasing any tension from your jaw. Having set your focus, your mental focus, through your intention or personal prayer, let's continue to practice dharana, the sixth limb of yoga, concentration. Take a slow breath in and cat yourself, so round forward into plank pose. As you arrive in plank, steady your gaze about a foot of, in front of your hands on the floor, and let's pause another four breaths pressing the floor away with a slight grip at the tip of your fingers, drawing your shoulder blades apart and down onto your back ribs. Knees can be on the ground or legs actively straight, lifting your navel towards your spine. We're gonna come down very slowly in a, mod a variation. So lower your knees first. As you exhale, glide forward, bend your elbows to graze your side ribs, lower your chin to the ground. Pause here and draw your shoulders away from your neck. Look forward, chest is on the floor, throat is on the floor, tailbone is sticking up, and the belly is firming in. On your next exhale, slither forward until your legs are straight, belly is on the ground, and then come into Sphinx Pose to start a gentle back bend. Forearms on the floor, elbows about an inch in front of each shoulder, 
feel your ankles about hips width apart as you actively spread your toenails to press down onto your mat. Thus, lifting your knees, draw your shoulders down your back, take one more inhalation, spread the collarbones wide. Exhale, lower your chin to the ground and slide your hands outside of your mat in line with your shoulders. Come onto your fingertips there. Elbows bent apart, toenails grounded. Inhale, peel your shoulder blades down your back and draw your chest forward. Keep your legs actively lengthening. And then exhale, rotate your right shoulder behind you, look behind. Inhale, back to your center, open the chest. Exhale, rotate your left shoulder behind you, look behind. Inhale through center. Exhale again to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. Any organic movement here, maybe shaking the head no, just finding some freedom in your neck and shoulders. Common area to feel stuckness. Lion's breath, inhale deeply. Open your mouth and eyes wide, stick out your tongue, let it go. <sighs> Melt your chest to the ground, set your hands flat alongside your floating ribs. Hug your bent elbows close to your sides, ground firmly through the tops of your feet. Inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Take an extra inhalation to broaden the heart space forward. Tuck your toes, press through hands and knees, lift your hips high into downward facing down. Three deep breaths. So right away, steady your eyes onto one spot, fixing your gaze or drishti within a posture. As we talked about before, is a helpful tool in practicing dharana concentration. Bend your knees, look beyond your hands. After you empty your breath, think of lifting your pelvic floor to carry you forward, whether you walk or jump lightly to the top. With feet apart, hips distance, parallel your second toes. Put a little bend in your knees or a lot bend and press your hands either on your shins, on blocks in front of your feet or on the floor. And as you inhale, draw your chest through your upper arms, come up halfway and pause a few breaths. So feel that your weight is slightly heavier towards the balls of your feet than your heels. Front of your thighs are active here. Belly is actively lifting towards the spine. Neck is long, shoulder blades are moving down away from the neck. Take another inhalation. Exhale, forward fold. Firming down to your feet, inhale, sweep your arms to rise with that flat back. Let your palms meet as you look at them. Exhale, trace your thumbs down your center line. Arms by your sides, palms facing forward, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Take a few breaths here. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, synchronize the entire breath in so the palms meet at fullness. Exhale, bowing forward, belly is firm, knees can bend with a feeling of a flat back. Press with your fingertips and inhale, draw your chest through your upper arms. Carefully step into plank pose. Continue this time into chaturanga or take the other variation we just did. Exhaling down, cobra or upward facing dog. Breathe in and draw your heart forward, shoulders down. Tucking your toes, Lift the belly to help you lift your hips into downward facing dog. Let your body be still as you arrive. Steady your gaze and hear the balance rhythm in your breath. Bend your knees. Look ahead of where you want to land your feet. On empty breath, lift your pelvic floor and lightly land at the top of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, bow in. Firming down, inhale, rise. Follow your in-breath to the top as your palms meet. Exhale, tracing your midline. 
Inhale, sweep your arms up. One more, sun salutation A. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Step into plank or lightly jump into chaturanga. Moving into cobra or upward facing dog, follow your pace of breath. We'll meet in downward facing dog for three breaths. So you might have caught yourself in a state of flow. Some call it being in the zone in positive psychology. The state of flow is this place of full immersion in a task at hand. Whether it be gardening, playing basketball, flowing through yoga postures. Feel into the qualities of flow. Bend your knees, look forward. Bottom of the breath, walk or float. This time, let your feet come together to touch. Inhale, lengthen the halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees together to touch. Inhale, sink your hips back into chair pose. We're gonna go right into continuous movement of sun salutation B. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Step into plank or float into chaturanga as you breathe out. Inhale, heart forward, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, hips back to downward dog, one breath, one movement. Inhale, raise your right leg from the inseam of the leg. Exhale, round forward, knee to nose. Set the foot lightly inside of your right hand, spin the back heel down, facing forward. Inhale, rise completely into warrior one. Take the exhale down, entering your vinyasa, cobra or upward facing. Back to downward facing. Inhale, lift your left leg from the inseam. Exhale, round forward, step the foot inside of your left hand, spin your right heel down, facing forward. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Exhale, lower through chaturanga. Keep going at your pace of breath. Downward facing dog, about three breaths. Bend your knees, look ahead of your hands. Bottom of your exhale, walk or float to the top. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Inhale, sit low in chair pose. And then extending your arms forward, begin to lower to sit onto your mat. Entering one round of boat pose, lifting your feet. Knees can be bent or legs straight. Arms can be forward or holding your thighs or the floor. Think of lifting your pelvic floor or applying Mula Bandha, the anal lock we talked about a week or so ago. Uddiyana Bandha, the abdominal lock. Tall spine, relaxed shoulders. Last four breaths. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, two. Deep breath in. And then exhale, set your feet on the ground. So press your feet on the floor, lift your spine tall, and then take a few breaths to very slowly, mindfully lower onto your back. And as you come down onto your back, please reach for your strap if you have one. Bend your right knee into your chest, straighten your left leg onto the floor, and step the ball of your right foot into the strap. No, we're not cooling down just yet, but this is gonna help us continue on with our standing poses. Holding the strap in your right hand, place your left hand on the very top of your left thigh in order to help root down the left hip. Extend your right leg towards the sky, flexing both of your feet. Turn out your right thigh bone at the hip so there's an external rotation, your right knee and toes, 
begin to point towards your right wall. Now grounding both hips and both shoulders, take a few breaths, slowly opening your right leg out to the right side. Only to the point where you don't start to lift your left hip off the floor. Let's take a few deep breaths through the nose. Steadying your gaze, one focal point. Last two breaths here in supine hand to big toe pose. Draw your belly in to help you lift your right leg up. Bend your right knee. Let's transfer the strap directly to the left foot. Slide your right leg forward on the ground. Extend your left leg up. Flex both feet. Now holding the strap in your left hand, place your right palm on the very top of your right thigh. Ground both shoulders, both hips. Begin to externally rotate your left thigh at the hip. Left knee and toes facing left wall. Slowly open your left leg out to its side. Deep inhale. Slow, steady exhale. Just a few more breaths. Engage your lower belly to slowly lift your left leg back to center. Bend the knee, remove the strap. Draw your two bent knees into your chest and begin to rock sideways or forward and back a few times. Let's meet on all fours, hands and knees. Entering cat cow, just a few rounds. Inhale, coil your chest forward and up. Looking up, lift your tailbone too. Exhale, contract your belly. If you're looking for a lower back stretch, tuck your toes here as you round. Inhale, lift your chest, draw the shoulders back and down. Exhale, contract your belly, maybe with the toes tucked around your back. Last cycle of Vitalesana. At the end of your exhalation, lift your hips. Let's meet in downward facing down. Walking your hands back towards your feet. Bend your knees any amount. Lifting your toes, slip your palms face up. Under into the soles of your feet for Padahastasana. Not only are we stretching the outer wrists and forearms, but all of the back side of your body. Feel free to bend your knees any amount so that you're not feeling any strain in the back of your body. As you inhale, draw your heart through your upper arms, lengthen the sides of your torso and neck. Keep those lengths as you exhale a hinge even deeper. Let your head completely fall. In fact, you might see if you can shake it out a bit, nod it a few times, and as you flare your bent elbows apart, also lift your shoulders up away from your neck. Feel your weight shift more into the balls of your feet. Just a few more breaths. Belly is firming in towards the lower back. Slipping your palms out from underneath. Grab your strap. If it's beside you here, bring your hands to your hips. Point your elbows towards the sky. And with bent knees, lead with your chest so that with a flat back, belly firm, you inhale, slowly rise. <sighs> so let's turn to face the wide width of your mat. Please grab your two yoga blocks if you have them. And as you open your arms wide, stepping at the center of your mat, step or jump your feet about as wide apart as your wrists, placing your blocks just outside of your calves. And then as I mirror you here, turn out your left leg from the hip 90 degrees, turn your right leg inward 45 degrees, and align your left heel to the arch of your right foot. Bend your left knee to stack just over your left heel wrapping your left glute and outer hip underneath to track the center of your knee with your center toe. Firm the top of your right thigh bone back as you straighten your right leg. 
and feel the bowl shape of your pelvis. As your front knee is bent, that bowl is as upright as possible. Belly is drawing in, slightly lifting up, tall spine, shoulders relaxed. Now, taking the strap in your right hand, wrap the long tail behind your back so that it dangles outside of your left thigh. We're coming into bound side angle pose. So keeping the bend in your left knee, draw your pelvis towards your rear leg, reaching your left arm forward past your front knee. Then take that left arm on the inner side of your left thigh. Find the other end of the strap with that hand and then walk your hands as close together as you can while your left forearm nudges your left thigh open. Let your left thigh remain still. Stay solidly where it was. Continue to rotate your left glute underneath your body. Feel your tailbone actively reach back towards your right outer heel. Some of you might walk your hands close together where you clasp your fingers and let go of the strap. Now, lean back, open your chest. Think of spiraling your sternum slightly to face the sky. If you're not able to do that, if you're not able to lean back and instead you're leaning forward as if you're bowing, then better to loosen the grip on that strap, add a little more space between your hands. This posture can be a deep opening for your lower back, but it can also be very opposite. It can infringe pain when done without proper alignment. Let's take another three breaths here in bound. Uttita Parjvakanasana. Press down through your feet, unbind your arms, inhale, rise up, warrior two, reverse it, flip your left palm up and lean back into peaceful warrior. Find that lateral extension through your left side body. Navel still drawing in, shoulders still relaxing down for two more breaths. Now, as you come back to warrior two, we're gonna transition into half moon pose. And that's where you might use the block. You may like to bring your right hand to your right hip in the transition. Steady your eyes to focus on the ground just ahead of your left foot. Steady your breathing. And then take your left hand either onto the block or the floor, about six inches ahead of your left pinky toe out to the left upper corner. Drag your right foot forward, flex your right foot, lifting your right leg so that it traces the midline of your mat and is parallel to the floor. Just like we did in side angle pose, rotate your left glute underneath your body and direct your tailbone back towards your left heel. Let your crown reach forward as you spiral your chest open maybe lifting your right arm, or maybe coming into Chapasana, in which you bend your right knee towards your belly, right hand catches hold of the top of your right foot, kicking your right leg towards straight while pulling the foot towards your glute, opening the right side of your chest. What is the quality of your breath here? Preparing to step back to warrior two. Be mindful in your transition. With your right leg extended, eyes steady perhaps on the ground ahead. Bend your left knee and try to softly land your right foot to the floor into warrior two. Grounding there for a couple deep breaths. Now, from warrior two, please straighten your legs and pivot your feet to face forward so they're parallel to each other. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn out your right leg from the hip 90 degrees and turn in your left leg 45 degrees. Align your right heel to the arch of your left foot. 
and bend your right knee just over the ankle. Feel the rotation of your right outer hip underneath as you align middle of your right knee with middle toe. From the top of your left thigh bone behind you as you straighten your left leg. Notice with your hands and your hips, the alignment of your pelvic bowl. Find a slight lift of your frontal hip bones so that there's more ease in lengthening your spine. Now let's take that strap. I forgot to ask you to grab that in your left hand. Wrap the strap behind you. Let it dangle outside of your right thigh. And then glide your pelvis sideways towards your rear leg as you reach your right arm forward first. You want to try to lengthen this right side of your torso, not compress it. And then as your right arm comes onto the inside of your right thigh, find the other end of the strap to hold on to, walking your hands as close together as you can while nudging right arm against right thigh. Right thigh remains solid. Right glute continues to wrap under. Tailbone lengthens towards left heel. Chest spirals towards the sky as you lean back. Remember, if you find your torso bowing forward, then you could loosen the space between your hands on that strap. You want to avoid that. As you steady your gaze, listen to your breath. Three more. Take a look at your left foot, your right foot, and then inhale, rise up to warrior two. Flip your right palm to face up, sweep it back into a lateral extension of the spine. Peaceful warrior. Feel aliveness, activity in your belly. Shoulders relax, two more breaths. Inhale back to warrior two, preparing for a half moon. You might place your left hand on your left hip. Gaze at the floor ahead of your front foot and begin to walk your right hand on the block of the floor, upper right corner from your right pinky toe. Drag your left foot forward, entering the jungle here, and flex your left foot off the floor. Left leg is parallel to the ground, tracing the midline of your mat. Keep rotating your right glute underneath and reaching your tailbone towards your inner left heel. As the crown of your head reaches forward, spiral your chest open. You might raise your left arm towards the sky, maybe look up. You might enter Japasana, in which you bend your left knee towards your belly, catching hold of the top of your left foot with your left hand, kick your leg towards straight, as you pull your foot towards your glute, using those counter forces to find balance as you open the front of your left shoulder. Steady breath in. Slow exhale. Let's take a few more breaths. Now, as you come out of this posture into warrior two, you may want to fixate your gaze down in front of your front foot. With your left leg extended, bend your right knee slowly. Find your center here, navel towards the spine as you gently land your left foot back into Virabhadrasana two. Couple of breaths. Deep inhale. And exhale, straighten both legs. Parallel your feet, and let's prepare for a wide-legged forward fold with an option to move into headstand. You may want to use your blocks and place them in front of you. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, roll your shoulders back. Exhale with belly firm, hinge from your hips, let your weight shift slightly more forward. With a feeling of a flat back, lower your hands. Coming up halfway, draw your chest through your upper arms, breathing in. Exhale, fold even more. Now option to clasp your big toes. Parangustasana to pull yourself in further. Option to hug one calf and then the other calf. 
option to move into tripod headstand where you plant your hands back, creating a triangular base with the top of your head and the two heels of your palms, arms like chaturanga, arms parallel, elbows bent, 90 degrees. For those of you moving into headstand, remember that your hands are actively pressing into the ground so as to maintain the natural space within your neck. No compression in the neck here. You're lifting the shoulders actively away from your ears. If both feet rise, let them come together, be flexed, pressing the mounds of your big toes towards the sky and reaching your tailbone towards them as you create a vertical line, stacking ankle, shoulders, hips. So whatever version of your inversion, let's take at least three more deep breaths. In your time, let's meet in the wide-legged forward fold, rising halfway up, preparing for a spinal twist. As you set your right hand front and center on the ground or on a block, level out your two hips and elongate your spine forward. Raise your left arm and exhale, spiral your chest to face your left side. Breathe in. Send your right sitting bone back and lengthen your crown forward. Exhale, continue to rotate your chest. Feel your wide wingspan as you reach left fingertips towards the sky. Two more breaths. Send your shoulder blades down your back ribs. Bottom of your exhale, lower your left hand in place of the right. Square your hips, inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, turn your chest to face your right and raise your right arm up. Inhale, lengthen. Hug your outer hips towards your midline and exhale, continue to twist. Allow your right collarbone to splay from the sternum, reaching its energy past your right fingertips towards the sky. Two more breaths. Send your left sitting bone behind you. Bottom of your exhale, lower both hands. Bend both knees and bring your hands to your hips. With belly firm, front of the thighs firm. Leading with your chest, inhale, slowly rise with a flat back. Step or jump your feet together and let's come down to sit. Take one of your blocks, please, as we enter bridge pose, hugging the skinniest width of that block in between your thighs. And you may want to slowly come down a little more, strengthening the muscles throughout the torso called the core. When you do land, prepare for two rounds of your chosen back then, whether it be bridge, restore to bridge, or upward facing bow. So starting in bridge, bring your arms down by your sides. Walk your feet back and set them where you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite. Parallel your feet, brown the backs of your shoulders, tilt your chin slightly back away from your chest. And on your next inhale, lifting your hips, draw your tailbone forward towards the block. Keep breathing five to 10 full breaths before you lower. Walk your upper arms closer together underneath your back ribs, keeping your elbows straight. If your hands meet, perhaps interlace them. Feel your hamstrings, the muscles in the backs of your thighs activate. It's the feeling you get as if you were dragging your heels towards your glutes. Press down through the four corners of each foot and slightly spin your inner thighs downward towards the floor. This helps to open up your lower back. Counter that with lengthening your tailbone further forward. This helps to open up your hip flexors. Deep breath. 
breaths. When you decide to come down, use an exhalation to carefully lower upper back, middle back, tailbone next. When you land from Setu Bandha, Sarvangasana or bridge pose, try not to hug your knees in, just let your feet settle on the floor. Take a moment and just let the pelvis settle into the ground. About three breaths as you're thinking about what you're going to do for your last variation. If it's going to be restore to bridge, use the block under your sacrum, maybe two blocks, and rest there. If it's regular bridge, take that on your own, maybe about 10 breaths. If it's upward facing bow, leave the block between your thighs and I'll walk you through that. Here we go. Same setup in the legs for upward facing bow, Urdhva Danyasana. Raise the arms overhead, bend your elbows towards the sky and flip your palms to face down, fingertips alongside your shoulders, slightly turning out. Walk your shoulder blades down your back. Keep your elbows from splaying apart wider than hips bent. You want to keep your arms parallel, just like your, your legs are parallel. Then begin to lift your pelvis as you breathe in. Anchor down through the four corners of each foot. Activate your hamstrings. Lengthen your thighs and tailbone forward. And bring the crown of your head to the floor. Pause there. You may want to walk your hands slightly wider apart to prevent the elbows from splaying. Draw the shoulder blades down your back. Hug the elbows in. And press through your hands, lifting your head too. Think more of lengthening your sternum towards your rear wall, your tailbone towards the space between your knees. The arch will happen naturally. Deep breaths. Urdhva Danyarasana. If it's available, you could straighten your legs. When you decide to come down, if you're in upward bow, take the stages in reverse. Crown of the head to the floor, pause. Chin to chest, slowly lower upper back. Middle back, tailbone last. And then once you've landed your pelvis from whatever last back bend you chose, please put the block aside, no block underneath your body. And separate your feet wider than hips distance. Separate your knees just as wide apart as your feet. Drop your thighs over to your right side. Align your left knee down the midline of your mat. Either stay here as you begin to open up the left side of your hips and lower back, or add a little more sensation by crossing your right ankle just above your left knee onto your left thigh or add some more and cross your arms overhead, catching hold of opposite elbows. So now to help calm your body and mind, relax your nervous system. We'll inhale a count of five. We'll exhale a count of seven. Empty this breath. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's uncross the legs. We'll continue the breath work on the second side. Separate your feet wider than hips width on the ground. Separate your knees just as wide apart as your feet. Drop both knees to your left side. Point your right knee down the midline of your mat. See if you want to add crossing left ankle over right thigh and maybe also switching the cross of your elbows overhead. Empty this breath to begin the pranayama. And inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let the breath go. And crossing your legs, draw your bent knees into your chest, give them a hug, 
or come into happy baby pose. Now I invite you for the last pose before Shavasana to choose your version of a forward fold. Whether you lie on your back and lift your legs up in supported shoulder stand, a block under the lower back, or regular version of shoulder stand, maybe plow pose, or come to sit the ladder, which I'll do with you, Hashimotanasana, seated forward fold. So if you're taking any of the cooling inversions, take that on your own for about a minute. Otherwise, if you're sitting up, you may want to use your strap as well, placing it around the balls of your feet. Separate your feet about hips distance. Flex your feet and press your big toe mounts forward so that your inner thighs slightly rotate towards the ground while the feet stay parallel. Firm your outer hips in towards your midline and press downward to your two sitting bones. Lift up through the center of your spine and broaden your chest. Soften your front ribs in and draw your shoulder blades down. Take a deep breath, lengthening front and back of your spine. Keep all that length. Exhale, hinge forward, just a little bit of your range. Then pause, reroute your sitting bones, lengthen your spine as you inhale. Belly firming in, exhale, fold some more, if possible. And just like that, take it for another three to five more breaths. Now, if you're not using a strap, you can be holding the backs of your legs or possibly clasping your big toes with your peace fingers, your index and middle fingers. And just make sure that you're honoring spaciousness in your neck and shoulders, not scrunching the shoulders towards the ears or closing off your throat. You want to feel ease in your breath. With the help of the belly engaged, inhale, lifting your chest, slowly rise from your forward folds. If you're on an inversion, please Gradually lower your legs, remove any props that might be under your pelvis. Let's set up for Shavasana. If you need some lower back relief, you could place your blocks or a pillow or rolled up blanket underneath the backs of your knees, supporting a light bend as you splay your legs apart, wider than hips width. And as you're lying back, you can also help to lengthen your lower back using your thumbs frame the left and right sides of your mid spine and press downward like you're giving yourself a massage to release the flesh of your glutes towards the backs of your knees just encouraging more length in your lower back as you rise arms wherever you like one hand to the heart one hand to the belly the palms turned up feel that your shoulders are evenly relaxed your jaw is soft Eyes are soft. Then here, imagine breathing in to the soles of your feet all the way up through all of your body, your legs, your pelvis, all the way to the crown of your head. And when you arrive at the top, sip in a little more if you can, holding the breath. Then when you're ready, open your mouth and slowly let it all go. Pause on empty and then release control of your breathing too. Gift yourself this time to be in stillness.
stay a little longer in Shavasana. So as I mentioned in our practice, the sixth limb of yoga, dharana, means concentration. And you might perceive it as being in a flow state. Here are some ways to bring or invite flow state in your daily lives. Doing something that you love. When you're immersed in something that you were just drawn to by your heart, it can be easy to feel timeless in that situation. Inviting flow state. Another is to create a ritual. As you gear up for activities that will require you to be in concentration, create a series of actions that you do every single time you're about to begin that task. Like if it's meditation, Maybe you light some candles, maybe you set up an altar where you feel a sacred space to be able to invite that state of concentration that will lead you into meditation. Another is to eliminate distractions. If you know that you're committing to a set period of time to be concentrated in deep presence with someone or something, perhaps put your phone on silent, let your text not visible. Because you know what you might tend to be distracted by. So if you'd like to enter sitting meditation, we practiced yesterday Trataka, which is gazing meditation. And if you would opt to practice that again, please grab something simple that you can gaze at, maybe a candle lamp, plants, and then set it at a level, a height in front of you as you slowly come up to sit so that it allows your eyes to just direct forward at eye level. Your head can stay relaxed. If you're not using the gazing meditation, choosing another one. to you and set the timer now for five minutes. Let your breath be gentle, peaceful, naturally flowing. Feel into the same qualities in your physical body. Open heart, strong back. gazing and need to close your eyes, that's fine. See if you can visualize the object you are gazing at with your eyes closed.
your mouth as you exhale. Slide the palms to meet at the heart, bowing in to close this practice. So in what ways can you consciously infuse moments of concentration off the mat so that you continue to strengthen that muscle within? Let's close with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. Oh. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.